And last Saturday, Leslie McCormick of the Farwell Group joined us. She's author of the book, Bank on Yourself, Why Every Woman Should Plan to be Financially Single, Even If She's Not. And I have signed copies at my store, Maryland's. So seeing as it's almost the end of November and the holiday gift-giving season is coming, know that I have a library of books with signed copies at my store, Maryland's, including uh, this book on financial wellness. And... Uh, we really last week talked with Leslie, and she advised us about now is the time to be tax efficient. March is too late. And Darren is with us today, so I'm intrigued to hear what I'm going to learn. So good morning, Darren. Good morning, Marilyn. Oh, I'd like to start by saying congratulations on that award for your store. Thank you. We were against some really big companies, so I didn't think we would win. I was really just happy to be nominated, but my members of my team have all won, and the ones that didn't win almost uh, took a standing and they were nominated. So against the big hitters, my team is stellar. Thank you. Well, it's the personal touch certainly helps. Well, this morning, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge listeners, well, particularly uh, the women listeners, uh, with a question. Are you prepared to lose 40% of your income? That's a bit of a scary question. I'm going to put a positive slant on it by the time we finish today. But it's a serious question. Are you prepared to lose 40% of your income? I mean, losing a spouse certainly has a whole set of unique challenges. That's no surprise. And, of course, in a world where widows don't walk around in black anymore – a society, other people aren't really aware of whether somebody's a widow or not. So those unique challenges aren't necessarily – don't happen within the sort of support mechanism that they used to have. Me, Leslie, and my team, the Farwell Group, help women who have lost a spouse navigate their way forward with a process designed specifically with their needs in mind. And, well, quite frankly, we've been at it quite a long time. And as a result of that, we've been able to identify or what has become clear is that there are actually some common challenges. And one of the common challenges, and it's supported by actual research, not only do we see it in our practice, but we can, the research has indicated quite clearly that after five years, that a woman who has lost a spouse, who has become a widow, their, her income can drop as much as 40% after five years. Now, obviously, as I said, that's a scary number. But it's not really about doom and gloom because as a matter of fact, most people as a couple and then as a widow have substantial savings. And so it would be a matter of drawing on those savings to, re, to replace that income that's lost. So it's not like we're going to have – people starving on the streets, but it's rather that now with having to draw more money from savings than receiving money as income, there's a whole new set of challenges. And it's those new challenges that can sometimes be difficult to overcome. And that's the perfect time to go out and get seasoned professional help. Now, let me give an example of how this all works. I'm going to give you a story about Nancy and Tony. Now, Nancy came to me three, well, actually closer to four years after losing her husband, Tony. And by the way, I apologize for all the male listeners out there. I know that sort of week after week, I'm always starting with stories where the man kicks the can. Uh, (laughs) It's unfortunate, but that's sort of kind of the way it is. So uh, again, my apologies for that. But after three years of tax returns... Nancy started to feel a little bit panicked, and she was feeling panicked. Good for her. The panic didn't cause her to freeze and and just do nothing. Instead, what she did was she went out and started to seek professional help. Now, what was keeping her awake at night was this, and it's a, it's one of these common challenges we see. Now that she had become a widow, she had lost Tony's old age security payment. Because she was already receiving the maximum Canada pension plan, because she had earned the maximum Canada pension plan through all her own years of work, she didn't get any survivor benefit from Tony. So she lost Tony's Canada pension plan benefit. Uh, Tony had actually selected that his defined benefit plan 
would stop on death. Now, there are a lot of other choices. Many people choose that there'll be some survivor benefit. And when you make those choices, that means there's a little less income month to month while you're alive. Now, they made that decision together. It wasn't a surprise, but his defined benefit plan income stopped. He had taken, there was an arrangement they had made in their will that on death, some money would go to the kids right away. Not much, but it was some. That reduced the pot of savings that they had. And then now that Nancy was single, she could no longer have income splitting with the spouse. That means, in fact, her own tax rate was higher. And as a result of all of these things, she stopped getting her own old age security payment because her income was too high. All right, granted, again, sorry, guys, Tony wasn't there, but the loss of income was certainly more significant than could be overcome by just having one person in the household. So this is a problem that we see uh, common, that women, when they're by themselves, have less income and a higher tax rate than they were together as a couple. So what were the new challenges that Nancy had? Nancy needed two new tools. Number one, she needed a tool to go out and convert those savings that she had into a reliable, monthly, tax-efficient income. They didn't really need to do much of that before because the income from all these other sources was high enough to supply most of their needs. Every once in a while, they would go make a withdrawal from their savings for special things like a trip or renovations or that sort of give some money to the kids. But now she really needed her portfolio, needs her portfolio to produce an income for her. She didn't have the tools to do that because her and Tony were never really in that circumstance. So she needed to do that. Number two, well, as you start thinking about withdrawing money from savings, what's very important is how much of the money you take from savings actually ends up in your own pocket as money to spend to support your lifestyle. That's called your after-tax income. And the amount that you keep is a function of not only the type of investment you make, but very importantly, where you take the money from. Because if you're taking the money, for example, from registered accounts, that money's taxed as income. And therefore, after tax, you end up with a lot less. So there's a question about whether money that you're withdrawing should come from registered accounts, tax-free savings accounts, non-registered accounts. These are important questions because they'll have a big impact on the after-tax income you need. So Nancy needed help, and she understood that she needed help, good for her, uh, to help her with these two questions, how to produce that regular tax-efficient income and where to take that income from. Now, after working together for a little while, we did some planning, uh, Nancy was quite easily able to fill that gap with the savings that her and Tony had. And so what were the learnings that come from Nancy's story? Let's go back to that question. Are you prepared to have 40% less in income? Well, the answer is you can be if you plan ahead. Getting a, getting a plan is your best defense against that sort of thing. Not only get a plan as a couple, But get a plan for that worst case scenario. Get a plan for if there's only one spouse, because what many people are surprised by is just how different that is than the plan as a couple. So plan ahead. We say it over and over week after week. The best plan is to have a plan. And by doing that, you can be prepared. It doesn't need to be a shock. And You'll be ready for whatever circumstance comes about. Now, next week, I'm actually going to take this story that we've talked about, Nancy and Tony, and get a specific strategy for something that could have been put in place a few years ahead of time if they'd done that exercise of planning ahead. So if someone wants to learn about the how and where, and I guess making their portfolio an income producer or make their money work for them and give less money to the tax man, are you going to work today? I am going to work this morning. So where do we reach you? Uh, Reach me at my office, 416-863-7501. 
416-863-7501. And I believe you have all sorts of documents and brochures that can guide people through different uh, scenarios in their life. And your focus to help widows, if you're sitting there and you this you, resonates with you, then it doesn't hurt to ask an expert. And the Farwell team and Darren Farwell will give you that complimentary consultation. They'll give you the review that you need so that you can make an informed decision. The number for Darren, 416-863-7501. And the contact information is on my website, marylins.ca, under the sponsor experts. Darren, thank you. I look forward to learning more and hearing more about Nancy's story next week. Thank you, Marilyn. And and as you said, we do we do focus on helping widows. But uh, as I was hinting at in my discussion today, the best time to prepare for that sort of circumstance is actually when you're still a couple, because long term planning will cause the best you know, long term outcomes. So get started now. Plan ahead. Best case scenarios. Worst case scenarios, and we do for the as you mentioned also, we do have tools, um, as I said, that we can send uh, listeners just to uh, to get a little bit more information about this idea of pr- producing an income, and uh, also where to take it from. And you can get those. You could also visit us at our website, the Farwell Group, or the same on our Facebook page. Thank you, Darren. And Leslie's book basically says it: if you're going to do something. Bank on yourself and plan to be financially single, even if you're not. So thanks again, Darren. I look forward to that conversation next week.